show for you tonight. Oh, I'm so excited. You should be so excited, too, because a lot of you out there did that www dot thing, foodtv.com. Kind of give us a little bit of your responses. Let me tell you what we're going to... Oh, by the way, Emeril Lagasse here. Welcome to Emeril Live. <laughs> you know, America loves Chinese food. Yeah. Absolutely. And there are some dishes that we've become really familiar with, like egg drop soup, chop suey, egg rolls, of course, just to name a few. But they're really considered American Chinese food. But and I'll get into that later on. I'm so excited about this show. Tonight I thought we would cook up some of those classics, the America Chinatown, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> thought it was a blackout for a minute. <laughs> Speaking about classics, we got Doc Gibbs in the Everlap Band. <laughs> So hold on to your egg roll, because it's America's Chinatown right here on Emerald Live. How are you? You like Chinese food? Absolutely. You like, you like Chinese food? How you doing, buddy? Nice shirt. How are you? See, you thought these were the cheap seats, right? Huh? It's, it's not the bleachers here. This is like grandstand. All these wonderful ingredients inspiring Chinese food. I love Chinese food. Let me give you a little history first before we start. Have you ever wondered uh, how to make General Tao's chicken? You know, it's on, like, every menu. You go anywhere, and you can find that General Tao's chicken. I'm going to show you how to make it tonight. Yeah. And then I'm going to show you a kicked-up version of chop suey and give you a little history on that. And then you're probably wondering, how do you make sweet and sour shrimp, right? Yeah. Well, we're going to make sweet and sour <laughs> shrimp, too. I may even stick in an egg roll, but first we're going to start with everybody's favorite. This was the number one. You would think it was wonton, but it was actually egg drop soup. Yeah. Let me give you a little history here, just for you history buffs. Basically, there were no Chinese restaurants, food. And, um, 18, late 1800s, started migrating here, mostly from Canton or Cantonese, which is a region of Chinese cooking. And on the West Coast, they open up these places, little places called Chow Chows. But basically what happened is as it evolved and they migrated elsewhere in the United States and began opening Chinese restaurants, they realized that Americans were kind of bored, didn't really, weren't really educated with proper Chinese cooking. So a lot of them started making Americanized versions, like egg drop soup, sweet and sour pork, sweet and sour shrimp. Those are really American Chinese sort of classics. And in our survey, the top ones are what we're going to do tonight. So I'm going to get started and make egg drop soup. You ready? Yeah. All right. Now, one of the things that you need is a good chicken stock. Whether you get chicken bones, add a maripois, cover it with water, salt, pepper, bay leaf, herbs, bring it up to a boil, let it simmer for a couple of hours and make your own, or whether you buy quality chicken stock or chicken broth, what you want to do before I added chicken broth to this, whether it's homemade or can store-bought, you got to taste it. See how strong it is, first of all. That's what I'm doing first. But instantly, I now know the playing field. I know that it needs a little salt for me. 
I know it needs some fresh ground pepper. For me. I mean, we haven't built any rocket ships here yet. Three ingredients. Now we're going to make the soup. I'm going to turn the heat up to like medium high. Get it to start simmering. I have shiitake mushrooms. Took the... Oh, stop playing with my emotions. <laughs> Took the stems off, put a little julienne of them inside of that first. Green onions, or they, they would call scallions. Add some of those in there. And this happens to be a little chiffonade of cabbage or bok choy. You could use regular cabbage if you want. Chiffonade is the cut. It's kind of stringy like that. And in most Chinese cooking, the salt that they use is soy sauce. So a little soy sauce in there. Wow. He's on fire. <laughs> okay, now that we've got those ingredients, we're going to let that sort of simmer. Very simple flavors. We're going to just extract that a little bit. And while we're waiting for that to come up to temperature, I'll show you the next step. Egg drop soup. We're going to crack a couple of eggs in this dish. Okay. Then we're going to just take a fork and beat them up. Real simple. See the soup is starting to simmer? Now, now that the eggs are incorporated, the egg yolk with the egg whites, are you guys ready for egg drop soup? Yeah. Watch how simple. I'm going to turn the heat down just a bit. Using a couple of chopsticks, we're going to slowly start adding the egg inside of the soup. Slowly drizzle it in. And there you have it, egg drop soup. Okay? And you can just serve it in a little bowl. <laughs> Garnish it the way that you want or not. And there you have it, egg drop soup, okay? <laughs> Pretty simple, huh? Pretty simple stuff. General Chow. That's what we're going to do when we come back. Another night, stick around, Doc Gibbs. Cooking from America's Chinatown. We had a little egg drop soup first. Next on the list, that general. It's actually sao, not tao. Sao, general sao. <laughs> so, let me show you folks how you do that. You want to get and marinate your chicken for a couple of hours if you have your way. You use white meat, dark meat, whatever kind of meat you want. Just chop it up in little chunks, like so. Make sure, of course, you know, you wash your hands, wash the cutting board, take the pressure washer out of the garage, <laughs> pressure wash the entire street when you're done with, you, you know the rules, okay. So what we want to do now is we're going to add some soy sauce. I have a couple of, actually I have one egg white in this bowl.
We're going to beat that up. And we're going to add... Thank you, Doc. Some soy sauce, a little cooking wine. And now we're going to dissolve cornstarch into that mixture. If it seems to be a little thick, we'll add a little more cooking wine. And then what you want to do, sort of salt a little bit your chicken. We're going to put it inside of this bowl. And let the chicken marinate. You could do that right in the ice box. So that's the first step for General Sao. <laughs> now, the sauce part of the general. Again, cornstarch, which you'll find in a lot of Chinese cooking. And we're going to dissolve that with a little bit of cornstarch. Also, soy sauce. Rice wine vinegar, a little of that cooking wine, and just a tad bit of sugar. You with me so far? All right. And we're going to mix that up. See, the thing with cornstarch, you have to dissolve it in a cold liquid, but it'll never come to its complete thickening ability until it comes to a boil, okay? And they use a lot of cornstarch in this type of cooking. Now, what I have is a swap of this inside of the ice box that I did a few hours ago. And so now the chicken looks like this, you see? It's kind of getting a little bit of that flavor going on. And we're about ready to start this dish. We take a little bit of oil. And the first thing that we want to do, make sure that oil is like a skillet, except the way that it's shaped. Then what we're going to first do is we're going to take some cashews. Oh, yeah, babe. Oh, this is the real General Sao here. We ain't messing around. And we want to get... Can you smell that already? We want to get the flavor out of the cashew without burning them. So we're going to add them get this nutty flavor going on. Meanwhile, the same thing is happening when our wok is that we've also got this flavor now inside of that oil. We're going to add a little bit more oil to this. And now what we're going to do is we're going to begin to start adding the chicken in pieces. All right. So we got the general sow thing going on. Now, sometimes if you order this thing, it'll almost taste like it's been breaded. You know, that's just like the quick way of doing it, you know. Unfortunately, that's what happens with a lot of cuisine. People start taking shortcuts. I don't know. I don't know how to play that game, so we're going to fry our chicken. Meanwhile, I got a julienne here, carrot, some snow peas, got a little cornstarch, and some cabbage. And I thought what we would do is just sort of make a, a little vegetarian egg roll. How's that sound to you? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to cut the cabbage up. You can put shrimp in it, you can put chicken, whatever you want. What we're going to do is take a little sesame oil in this skillet. And we're going to start cooking the cabbage. When this cooks for about a minute or so, maybe two, we'll add the snow peas and the carrot. Meanwhile, I'm going to continue to fry this. And then when we fry this, I'm going to show you the gravy part of this, and I'm going to show you the stabilizing part of this egg roll, what gives it all the yum-yums, okay? But don't even think about touching that dial. We'll be right back. Stick around. Dr. <laughs>
back, everybody. Cooking some of the American Chinatown classics. And we've got General Sal's chicken here. And we started working on all I had in this pan here, a little sesame oil, added the cabbage, about two minutes, added the snow peas, and added the carrot. That's where we are right now. Nothing uh, fancy here, OK? We're going to just cook that a little bit. Then I'm going to show you how we're going to flavor that. Meanwhile, back over here in General Sal's land, when the chicken is cooked, a lot of recipes will tell you you should take the chicken out. If you want to take the chicken out, take the chicken out. <laughs> now, dried chilies. You know those things that when you're eating it, you see that, okay? They're dry, but they're going to come back. Boy, let me tell you, you eat one of those, they'll light you up. <laughs> so now we have that. We want to get the flavor going of that, the pepper. Now, just when we're going to finish this up, we're going to add some crushed red pepper, garlic, and ginger. And ginger. Then we're going to add the cashews back in here. You with me so far? Yeah. Now look, I wish you could smell the chilies. Now, before the garlic and the ginger burns, right at the end, you're going to add that. Then what we're going to do is put the sauce in here. That's what's going to make the sauce. Then we're going to garnish it. Right at the end with some green onions or scallions. And there you have it, folks. The General's Chicken. So now, now you really know the General. So you can uh, kind of do this at home the right way. Garnish it again, little green onions like that. There you have it, General Sal's Chicken. Now, for this egg roll, here's what we're going to quickly do. We're going to add a little more sesame oil. We're going to take some soy sauce right inside of our cornstarch. <laughs> baby. <laughs> Dissolve it. Add it in here. Now we got the filling for a vegetarian egg roll. You let it cool, and then basically what happens when it gets cool is we're ready to make some egg rolls. Watch this. We take a little bit of water on our wonton skin. We take a little cool of the fi uh, little filling. Oh yeah, nice and cool. <laughs> now watch the trick. Get it in here. Roll it over, roll it. Right over here now, you fold this part in. Fold this part in, roll it. There you have it, egg rolls, okay? When we come back, America's Chinatown, another night! Keyboards, 
Lewis on the horns. Charles on bass. Texas Teddy on drums. Thank you. Thank you very much. And if you ain't feeling the love at home, you should be here because Doc Gibbs is in the house. All right. Now, one thing about making egg rolls, you can do them ahead of time, but you got to make sure that the bottom is sealed. Okay? You might have seen earlier that I just sort of had a little water on them, right? But you got to make sure they're sealed so that they don't fall apart. You can make them ahead of time. So basically, all they, all they take is um, some vegetable oil, about 350 degrees. We'll fry them up. Now, most people, when they eat egg rolls, they, uh, they either have that sweet sauce, which is a plum sauce, basically. For some reason, it got labeled duck sauce. <laughs> they must have just waved the duck over it, because uh, <laughs> there ain't no duck in there for me. And then there's the hot sauce, which is hot mustard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So basically, you just take some dry mustard. You know, you guys got that in your pantry. You probably haven't opened it for about three or four years. <laughs> you know, the yellow can. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, hey, Rachel, what's that for? <laughs> basically, to make your own hot mustard, it's real simple. You take the dry mustard and a little bit of water, a little at a time. Depending on the thickness that you want. To me, that's a good thickness right there. See how difficult that was? We got hot mustard. All right. Huh? <laughs> now, it's not uncommon for the egg rolls, which, you know, wontons, you know, they puff up. They got all this air inside of them. So don't call 911 if your egg rolls stop puffing up, okay? They're fresh, they're homemade. Speaking about homemade, while they're frying, let's go over this next sort of version of chop suey. We're gonna make a pork chop suey. You can make chicken chop suey. It's a little of this and a little of that. That's what it means, that's chop suey. So, first of all, there's the meat part of it. I used a pork tenderloin, and as you can see, Basically, with the pork tenderloin, you want to get pretty thin pieces. Of the meat. Okay, show you again. This is a very important part of it. They cut the meat very thin, a lot of vegetables. Now. You gotta flavor the meat. So, we put the pork thin. You could do it with beef, like I said, chicken. How are egg rolls doing? Not bad. Are you all plugged in and all that stuff? I'm ready. No, I can unplug. Can no you problem. unplug a second? Yeah. I mean, I, I know you have the unplugged version of Doc Gibbs as well. Right. I realize that. <laughs> I'm just wondering for a second if you could just help me out over here. No problem, man. My pleasure. You no. Know, if you could just sort of hold the egg rolls down like that. Uh, we're trying to get them brown like that. That, gotcha. that would be good. Gotcha. Thank you. Gotcha. Appreciate it. No problem. All right. So. Just, just whistle if you need me. Gotcha. Well, we're going to, with the pork, we're going to add a little bit of that cooking wine. Crushed red pepper. We're going to add a little bit of oyster sauce, soy sauce, little sea salt, rice wine vinegar, and then we're just going to dust it with cornstarch like that. That's basically now while we're marinating the meat. You with me so far? Yeah. Okay. Now, the next thing is we got to make the gravy part of it. Well, there's always like a gravy part of it. So with the cornstarch here, I'm adding chicken broth. Again, a little more oyster sauce, rice wine vinegar, 
And this is a hot sauce that they use called sriracha. Okay? Sriracha. How we doing, buddy? Smells good, man. Let me see. How's it look? You look, you did a fantastic Great. job. All right. So now what we want to do. Right. Thank you very much. You like hot mustard? Yeah, I love it. So what you want to do is you always want to season when it comes out of the fryer. Right. Okay? And then basically, <laughs> just take a little egg roll action like this and a uh, little bit of that hot mustard. Oh, man. A little bit of that hot mustard that you can dip in. Oh, a little essence, too. What, what the heck? There you go, buddy. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks a lot. A little vegetarian egg roll. All right. So now we got the sauce part of this cornstarch here. Now, we got garlic, water chestnuts, shiitake, celery, onions, bell pepper, and we got some bean sprouts, which I absolutely adore. What they do with celery, when people work with celery, they don't never realize it. Look, this is, it's got, it has like a fiber over here. You can uh, eat and floss your teeth at the same time. <laughs> so what they do is they'll take a vegetable peeler and peel it. And then they'll just kind of cut it like on an angle like this, you see? For their celery. Because a lot of celery in chop suey. All right, here we go. Hang on to your hats. Oil. Then the first thing that we're going to add, of course, is our meat. It's always very quickly, this cooking with wok. Now, once the meat starts to get a little brown like that. Then what we do is this. We add the celery. We add the onion. Shiitake mushrooms. Bell pepper. Bean sprouts. Water chestnuts. And then it wouldn't be complete without some garlic in there either. Now, I'm going to keep continue to wok fry this. I'm not going to add the gravy in until we come back. So don't even think about touching that dial. Doc Gibbs in the MLI. Hey! Lagasse here. We're really cooking tonight. We're in America's Chinatowns. Boy, are we, are we not having some fun or what, huh? Egg rolls. Yeah. All right, now, if I was to add these rice noodles like this, this would really be like a lo mein dish, okay? It's fine with me. I'm happy with that. But if I were to take these noodles and fry them, then I'd have chow mein. You with me so far? So, I don't know what we're gonna call this. Cause I got some fried and some not. So we'll just call it emerald chow mein. The other thing is, too, only in uh, sort of the Northeast will you find those uh, different type brown chow mein noodles, very unique to the area. So what we're going to do now, we're just going to continue to fry those noodles. While they're frying, we're going to stir fry this noodles. Mmm. 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 
Mm, good exercise. Oh, yes. And one. Two. I learned that from Richard Simmons. <laughs> now, what we're going to do now is we're going to whisk the cornstarch, add the sauce right in here, turn that heat up. Beautiful. So now, drain these real good. Get a little salt. <laughs> then we'll use some of these on the bottom like that. Okay, so we've got that there. And then we'll... Uh, take some of this. Add that right on there like that. Oh, yeah. Take a little bit like more like this and just a little more like that. And a little more like this. And a little more like that. And then we'll just kind of do a little of that. And we'll take some chai. Bam! Now, you see how easy that was, right? Mmm, very tasty, too. Now, this was really, really one that was really requested a lot. Sweet and sour shrimp. Oh, yeah, babe. Get in the wok hot, got some shrimp. Peeled, tail on. Gonna add a little bit of ginger, some crushed red pepper, a little bit of garlic in there. Season them up. Oh, yeah, babe. A little salt. Mm -hmm. I got onions, bell pepper, and I got pineapple. Fresh pineapple chopped up. Sometimes they put them red cherries in there. I gotta draw the line somewhere. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I'm trying to be as authentic as I can. Them, there's two things that really bug me, them red cherries and mint jelly. <laughs> it's a bunch of crap. <laughs> but it... <laughs> well, it is, Doc. I, I'm with you. Save them for the kids' drinks. <laughs> Anyhow, don't get me started, please. All right, now. Now we're going to make... Sorry. We're going to make the sauce by adding a little sugar, some garlic. And then I've got a little bit of uh, tomato ketchup. Crushed red pepper. Soy sauce. Red wine vinegar. Pineapple juice. Yeah, you know, that's the thing. There's a lot of ingredients for this type of cooking, but boy, I tell you, it's a lot of fun could do with the family. So we have that. Now what we're going to do is this. We're going to dissolve the cornstarch in this. <laughs> little chicken broth, just for a little flavor. All right, now look. You see how it's lumpy like that? It's the reason why it's lumpy. It's not dissolved properly. See, now if you get a whisk... Now the lumps are gone, okay? It's real simple now. First thing, we get a little bit of oil. So you gotta have all your ingredients ready for this type of cooking. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add some onion, bell pepper, a little salt. You don't mind if I use these tools again, do you? Anybody with the health department out there or anything? <laughs> I gotta have my tools, Doc. <laughs> now, as soon as that cooks for about a minute, add the pineapple. Add the shrimp. Watch how fast they're gonna cook. So be ready. When we come back, I'm gonna show you the sauce for an unbelievable sweet and sour shrimp. Stick around, we'll be right back. Doc, get yeah.
All right. Y'all having a good time so far, folks? Yeah. Are you kind of getting that American Chinese spirit there, huh? Yeah. Amazing dishes. Takes a little bit of time to chop, chop, and prep, prep, and do that stuff. If you have a nice stocked pantry, that will cut half the battle out right there. Like, I have a great stock pantry. I got a little Asian section, Chinese, etc. And then I, you know, I got my Italian section, and it makes it a lot easier. You don't have to hunt for everything. Now, this is just about ready. And uh, we took a little vote during the commercial break and decided to add just a few maraschino <laughs> cherries. <laughs> the control tower upstairs, you know. I said save them for the Shirley Temples. Anyhow, now what we're gonna do is this. Before we add our liquid, Part of the wonderful thing about this is presentation. So I'm just gonna go grab here a little bit of uh, pineapple that we had. And then we can use pineapple over here, pineapple over here. Then uh, we can use some green onions and uh, basically what we can do is cut the stems off let's add the sauce shall we here we go remember it's got to come to its complete boil before it's going to be at its full oh look at this already oh look at this Oh, look at this. So now, we'll just take those green onions like this and we'll make a few cuts. Oh, no, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Now we'll add the cherries, we'll add the scallions, and now we're ready. Watch this, we'll give it one more stir to coat it up. This is a great dish that you can serve with a pot of rice and uh, just basically serve it family style like this. It's unbelievable when you really think about how the Chinese cooking and culture people have really influenced this great country of food, don't you think? I mean, life would be pretty scary without these kind of dishes here. So we had uh, egg drop soup on your blessings, and we had... Uh, a wonderful vegetarian egg roll. We learned how to make hot mustard. <laughs> and then um, uh, a cinch. <laughs> the uh, combination chop suey uh, lo mein or chow mein dishes. I think we've got that under our belt. And of course, we got the general's chicken, which was fantastic. And now, of course, this incredible, look at that, huh? Sweet and sour shrimp. Unbelievable. I take my hats off to... Uh, the wonderful Chinese cuisine. I want to thank you for joining me tonight. I'm Emeril Lagasse. See you tomorrow, everybody.